This is an old textbook that I wanted to do a video about. That, uh, I just now got it online the other day. It was actually, it's actually older than I thought it was. It's uh, titled Understanding Electricity and Electronics 4th Edition. And there's who it's by. I'm going to show you the pictures, some of the stuff within. Or some of the st There's a stamp that's been covered over with permanent marker. This book's nearly in show, nearly, nearly in brand new condition. I believe it's, it's it looks like it had, got a little bit damp at one time though, but it's really nice. Notice the copyright dates on it. The most recent one is 1982, which is the year I was born. <laughs> I don't know if that's washed out or what, but uh, it's shown very washed out on the monitor on the camera. We'll see. I saw this book actually on Amazon.com and thought it was much newer than it is. I think it, if I remember correctly, the, the listing said it was from 2006. <laughs> But I wanted to show you the illustrations and stuff inside. Actually, this, this book was only $4, so I'm not worried about returning it. I thought it was, I think it's really neat, you know. And uh, certain things in the book is probably edited or non-existent in the modern version of this, this textbook. Here they are talking about static electricity and useful applications of static electricity. And uh, we'll take a look at the vintage illustration of the car. An electrostatic air cleaner. An electrostatic spray painting of the car. There's an electroscope assembly, is what I think it says there. I have to have the light turned down because it's, it's washed out the picture in the book. When I got the light lamp on. There's the self test for the chapter. This is a basic electric circuit. There's a buzzer right there and a switch and a battery. I think it's like an older style flashlight battery is what that is. There's an automobile frame, and the frame is used as a conductor. And right in the corner of the page is someone's address stamped on there. I don't want to show that. <laughs> Just because probably someone that currently has that address, maybe even the same people. <laughs> Mostly just wanting to show the pictures in this book, the illustrations or schematics or 
whatever's in here like that this is a pictorial diagram of a one transistor radio like right there and this uh, shows the symbols like the resistors and, and such that would be really handy to have This shows how you can make a, let's see here. This is schematic diagrams of a rectifier circuit, right there. The first thing that ticked me off is that uh, this book is actually older than I thought it was is uh, the way everything's illustrated in here. This here is a, let's see, this is pictorial diagrams used for learning by doing number two drawing schematic diagrams. This illustrates electric shock hazards. Looks like the guy's touching a wire that's come, coming down from the ceiling and, and it's coming in contact with the water cooler in the other hand. Here's something that's very rarely seen anymore, and uh, generally, if you don't, if you see one of these, you don't see one of these types with the wire hanging out. Pretty much that. <laughs> All you see is the ones with the tab that go onto the screw with the outlet. And here's some fuses. I'm sure probably the modern textbook doesn't really cover fuses like this does. Because they're, they pretty much went out to style, you know. This is a portable ground fault circuit interrupter. This is from Harvey Hub Harvey Hubble Incorporated. This is from 1982, mind you. Most likely. And that's a neon lamp tester.
these various types of older resistors. The older styling. Some of these look strange even for 1982 use, you know. I know this video is getting long, but I wanted to show this book off. And there's still plenty of these available online, apparently. Here's another illustration. This show the series in parallel, actually. It's a permanent magnet meter coil it's a meter movement you know I'll let you read that <laughs> and here shows various types of now vintage meters 1982 illustrations of such meters here's the thin digital oh no milli it's a milliameter That almost looks like the older gas pumps or something right there on the screen. And here we are in the capacitors. And the various styles of capacitors, how they looked back in the day. Images from Cornell Dubler. <laughs> I guess that's how you say that. Or Dublay. This is basic construction of a mylar capacitor. I don't know what the reasoning behind that, those curly leads are <laughs> on these capac capacitors. These are tremor capacitors, variable capacitors that uh, 
you probably most likely see if you work on radios. But now they're very compact, or the tuning is done electronically nowadays. There's a photo of a vintage capacitor tester. Now vintage, I should say. <laughs> And this uh, shows magnetism. This is an electromagnetic, electromagnetic magnetizer is what that is. <laughs> so, yeah. This book is very big. <laughs> this is a television flyback transformer from the day. And there's an audio output transformer. There's a power transformer. And there's choke coils. This is a weatherproof lantern battery. <laughs> it's from the Union Carbide Corporation. How about that? <laughs> this is the battery charger from back in the day. This shows alkaline cells. And this is a cell. This large one appears to be Duracell, <laughs> I think. There's some more batteries. This automobile led acid. Illustration right here. This is from General Motors. Somewhere in this book is a like a fan motor from Delco. You can see one of those on YouTube somewhere too. If you've never seen an electric Delco fan motor, use on that. It's used in an air conditioner. I think we're about ready to come up on that maybe. Okay, here's some here's some tubes in their various bases. Semiconductors and diodes from Texas in images by Texas Instruments Incorporated. And here's a tube checker, T 
tube tester, whatever you want to call that. <laughs> These are diodes. <sighs> I have yet to look at this book really good. So, so many, many of these pages are new to me. Here's an amplifier circuit. The vintage Syncor transistor tester. <laughs> And some integrated circuits from back in the day. Radio Corporation of America supplied that image. These images. Basically, Radio Corporation is known as RCA by most uh, laymen's pretty much. Here's a pocket size radio. It says photos by Maxwell. I wonder if they actually mean Maxwell. I don't know about that. Here's some information about circuit boards and such. This is still available online. A desoldering resoldering tool. I know this video is getting to be very long. <laughs> I may break it up into two parts because of the memory card restriction. <laughs> Here's that. Uh, Delco Products Division, the General Motors fan motor that I mentioned earlier. You can see one of these in an air conditioner on YouTube. I think you just have to vent look up vintage Whirlpool air conditioner and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Whirlpool of all things. <laughs> used one of them. It seemed like you'd think those would be competing brands because 
General Motors had their own brand of appliances. There's some tapes from back in the day. Insulating tapes or whatever you want to call those. This wire wrapping and wire and unwrapping tools. And there's a good old Weller soldering iron like I have. <laughs> or my dad has actually, that's his. There's some lamp bases. Some of these I'm sure are getting outdated. This is an illustration of a home electrical system. These are electrical panels from back in the day. Load centers, actually. This is the fused load center, and this is the one with the breakers. The images are by the Square D Company. And there's range outlet. And there's some lamp holders and one lamp holder and several different types of switches. This is armor cable from images by General Electric. And switch box and junction box used with uh, like armored cable and uh, conduit. There's something you really don't see anymore. style drill you still see a lot of these it's a two pole shaded pole induction motor the only thing is they're cheapened nowadays like everything to get us this heater thing like right here it looks like it was going to a light socket <laughs> I don't know if I'd recommend doing that it's clothes iron and there's a toaster that's the grid that's down inside the toaster hot plates 
Kreuzens Hater. The reflection tater looks like it'd be very easy to replace. This is a microwave from back in the day. This is a modern microwave or electronic oven from a, man, a mana corporation. <laughs> And anybody familiar with cooking has probably seen one of these. There's some water here with the illustration of the tank. Here's a air conditioner illustration window air conditioner and then the image was supplied by Kelvinator Incorporated I think this is the uh, solenoid starter motor. This is a spark plug. There's a sealed beam headlamp. And various types of automotive fuses. I've never seen that type used in the cars, actually. <laughs> if this ain't crazy looking. <laughs> Modern Telegraph Systems. Shows illustrations of a telephone system. And of course the common receiver back in the day. Or transceiver, I think is the technical term for that. And this is a modern touch tone phone, which I've got one. Pretty much identical to it. This is by American Telephone and Telegraph. It's obviously a Western electric phone. Illustration. Okay, this is a illustration of a, of a record player head. I can't think of the it's the cartridge. I mean I couldn't think of the name of the sucker. <laughs> they played records and they've been oh, I played a million a million over my life, you know.
Look at the, uh, look at the inside of this speaker. I like that. <laughs> Well, it's beginning to look like I'm going to take a break and unload my memory card. Okay, here we are after a brief break to unload the memory card on the computer. And to grab a quick snack too. <laughs> This is an amateur radio station. It doesn't list the brand of the radio in the picture. I'm sure someone probably knows what it is. Man, you're talking really vintage with this picture. <laughs> this is a television camera and illustration of the insides. This is right here. The tele this televised scene is right there. This is all the circuitry and what have you. RCA supplied the image, Radio Corporation of the Emma of America. This is a General Electric color television. <clears throat> that highway looks like an RCA television to me. <laughs> This is a black and white tube. Showing the essential elements. Photo courtesy of Radio Corporation of America. Once again. <laughs> and this chapter talks about cable television. Cable. <laughs> it's light. <laughs>
This hand was getting tired of holding the camera. It's been doing this, doing it all this time. With minimal break. There is a an electronic calculator. It's now vintage. A Hewlett Packard made vintage electronic calculator. Okay, in this picture, let's see, there's the... There's what she was doing. <laughs> This is an oscilloscope. The Heath Company. And there's illustrations of what you would see on the screen. It's in different points of the television circuit. This is how you would see it on the oscilloscope, apparently. You've probably seen a few of these running around on YouTube as test equipment. This is an RF signal generator. My Dynascan Corporation. There's a signal tracer. It's a Hartley oscillator circuit. Look at the vintage wall in the background. This is using a logic probe to check a digital clock integrated circuit. And we're almost finished with the book. We have a few more pages. This is the glossary. There's some really neat definitions in it. There's the index. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you've hung on this long, thank you for watching. <laughs>